heard all these testimonies and sisters and brothers speaking. Kind of reminded me over there, Galatians, the third chapter, 27, 28, 29th verse, when Paul was writing, he said, You that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Then the 28th verse, he said, For there is neither Jew nor Greek. That's it. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male or female, but you're all one in Christ. You're all yes. one. And if you be Christ, you're a seed of Abraham. Yes. And here to his promise. Yes. And I believe that we've got a promise. Yes. But we first have got to look for it. we got to be like it was on the day of Pentecost. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. And Peter said, this is that. Amen. Well, I believe we're getting a touch of that. Glory. Glory. I believe we're seeing the time when the church gets back together like it ought to be. Yes. When you can feel the presence of God and the glory of God from the pulpit to the door. No little eyes, no little me. Yes. You know what? Unity has got you and I in it. Amen. You take the eye out and you got untied. Yeah. And I you know. take the you out, what do you got? It takes everyone striving. Yeah. Just like on a job, you have a certain job to do, and if you don't do it, it makes it hard on somebody else. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. And I believe it's time to get back yeah. in the day when we first come into this Pentecostal season when the Spirit of God was in the Yes. Well, one time, one time they even called a fire truck to a church. Yes. Because flames were leaping from the roof. I believe it. Yes. Praise but when God. they got there, there was no fire, just flames. Oh, yeah. I believe we can get back oh, right. like it was the day before. Yeah. 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 Amen. You know, I'm kind of like that. Praise I believe God. it. I'm kind of like that old farmer. That, yeah. You know, this English yeah. teacher said, uh, which is proper? Huh? Your hand is setting S I T T I N G, or your hand is setting S T T I N G? He said, a lady, I don't really know and I don't care. What bothers me when she cackles, she lands her line. <laughs> no, I don't care how fast they run, <laughs> but they got to continue. They can't quit up. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Be ready to send me back to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> glory, glory, glory. But I don't care how fast you run, if you stop, you're not going to get it. Amen. I don't care how high you jump, Pursue. you're going to come back down. Yeah, and this, this is something that we have to strive at. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise I mean, you know, what makes the Spirit of God come down? Praise. 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 Enter in engagement. Praise. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We need to be a thankful generation. My, my, my. And you know, you know, I can't stand people. Now, I like a little humor. Yeah. I always think a little humor is all out better than rumor. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But when you start belittling somebody else, yes. that's not a joke. That's right, brother. That's not a joke. That's right. Now, I don't mind talking about myself. <laughs> Mama said when I was born, everybody smiled and said, the doctor, he laughed out loud. <laughs> but hey, what are we? We're here to praise God, ain't we? Come on, praise Him. Let's go ahead. We're in a Pentecostal church. We're not in a cold, indifferent church. Like Brother Milo said, if, uh, if you got the wine, uh, it better come out like wine. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm glad one day I become a, a new creature. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 You know, like when I came to Christ, it was, 
We was having a service praying the old year in and the new year out. Amen. Yes. But I made up my mind something. You know, people don't have a made up mind anymore. You know, I've heard people say they have trouble getting rid of this and getting rid of that. I had problems. See, I was smoking since I was eight years old. I was smoking five. I was, made, I was smoking three and four packs a day and my fingers were yellow. Mm. The Lord had been dealing with me a long time. And I, I said to myself, I can't seem to do this by myself, but if I can get, pray through the Holy Ghost, I believe yeah. he'll take them away from me. See, I had my mind already made up. And when I prayed through after New Year, uh, after midnight, uh, the first day of 1961, uh, I prayed through the Holy Ghost. I got up, got rid of them white gods, uh, and never wanted one cent. Say, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. you got to have a made-up mind. Yeah. Yeah. The problem yeah. is, yeah. the problem is they want to hang on to this yeah. and try to hold on to this walk in the middle and it don't work. Yeah. You walk in the middle of the highway, you get run over. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Especially if a drunk driver comes along. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how many people in here don't have the Holy Ghost. I don't know how many people are seeking for the Holy Ghost. But I'd like to tell you a true story. This is absolutely true. It was some time in the early 1900s, the day, the heyday of the trains. God is just as real he did on the day of Pentecost as he's just as real now as he was then. And all we've got to do is repent, get the Holy Ghost, and get back to the foundation. If you don't build on a, a good foundation, it's not going to stand. That's the reason some people are in and out, in and out. They never had a good foundation. But this is a true story. There was a preacher one time that had just closed out a revival in one of our big Midwestern cities. And on his way home, he got on a train and sat down beside a young man and tried to start a conversation about the weather. <coughs> When the minister realized he got no response, and he turned to look at the young man, and tears were streaming down his eyes. He said, son, I'm a preacher. I'm a minister. I just closed out a revival. If there's anything I can do, I'll do everything I can. And so through a veil of tears, that young man proceeded to tell this story. He said, Preacher, nearly three years ago, I got so mean at home that I struck my own dad. But three weeks ago, walking by an old country church, I walked in and God grossly saved my soul. And now I'm on my way home. Yeah. Well, that's all well and good, son, but how do you know they're going to welcome you? How do you know they're going to want you home? He said, I wrote them a letter. He said, I was going to be on this train. And all my life, We've lived right beside these railroad tracks. 
And in the backyard, there's a little old apple tree. And I wrote them and told them that it was all right for me to get off, to hang my white rag in the top of that apple tree. But preacher, we're almost there. It's just around the curve. And I can't bear to look. And the mister said, son, I'll be your eyes. And he took his handkerchief out and dusted the window of that little old train. And all of a sudden, his face lit up on a great big smile. He said, son, son, you don't have a thing to worry about. Well, that apple tree's in full blossom. Well, there's white rags hanging from the top of the bottom. All right. And in the bottom of that apple tree, there's a gray-haired mom and dad. All right. With a great big white bed sheet in between them, saying, come on home, son, come on home. All right. And that's the way it is with God. Hey. Oh, this uh, uh, anointing that's been going on here, and hey. all this preaching, and all this singing, hey. and all this Come on home.